Good evening, beautiful woman. Welcome to Isaiah's Inspiring Evenings, a podcast full of goddesses' stories, witches' secrets, colors of women, and fairy seasons to integrate serenity, abundance, joy, and magic into your life. This is episode 11, Lessons from the Fire. The podcast existed only in French until recently, and I will record the first eight episodes in English shortly. Promise. I am Isaiah Bell, creatrix, magico-pragmatic life and business coach, goddess teacher, and traveling priestess. And this podcast aims to accompany you for peaceful and inspiring evenings. Isaiah's Inspiring Evenings is a podcast published every week on Saturdays, and you will find more info and the references I am talking about on my website, isaiahbell.com. Subscribe to the podcast on the platform of your choice to be informed of the publication of each new episode. If you like the podcast, you can support it by leaving stars, blue thumbs and reviews on whatever platform you listen to me. Lessons from the Fire A few days ago, I had an all-day real-life workshop with my French peeps, three of them here and the rest online, actually, about creating powerful intentions for 2021. Lovely day. I loved creating our vision boards together. Anyway, to my point. The three ladies are more urban than me. Not hard. I live in the beautiful middle of nowhere. During a break, they all rushed towards the fireplace and gathered around the fire. And I got reminded of how the fire, the hearth, used to be the natural centre of a house and of the importance of Estia's archetype, the Greek goddess of the sacred fire, of the crucial, literally life and death, importance of tending to the fire for our ancestors and of how much we naturally come together to the fire. And sadly, of how few of us actually have a fire in our houses anymore, of how much we are disconnected from nature, the seasons, the moon cycles, basic joys and basic duties, like tending to the fire. As for me, it is the first thing I do every morning in winter. It does take time and dedication. We are disconnected by modern life, air conditioning, central heating. No wonder so many of us forget to tend to our own sacred fires and get swamped and overwhelmed by artificial problems and lost away from our interior flame of life and energy. I felt sad, briefly. Then I felt my mission to bring back the goddesses' archetypes grow even stronger. When did you last spend time and energy tending to your fire, real or metaphorical? Fire was my inspiration again a few days later. As you know, every morning I have to light a fire to keep my house warm. I do not have central heating, so lighting a fire and having a fire burning all day is the only way I will not freeze. Moreover, these days I am alone in my house, as both my kids and my husband have left for a week. So the responsibility of the fire is strictly on my shoulders. Yesterday I was having a conversation with a bunch of besties and one of them mentioned that she did not feel inspired. I was really triggered. There are days when I do a really good job in the morning and the fire lights up easy and fast. And then there are days when, for some reason, whether I'm not concentrating or the wood is too wet or whatever, anyway, the fire won't catch. So I have to work harder at it until it catches. And then it gets going on its own. Most days, I do not feel inspired to light the fire. I'd love it if somebody else could do it. But hey, it's my job, and I chose to do it. And you may remember from a previous post that I actually love my fire. The point I'm trying to make is that in my life, I choose some things, like this fire. It doesn't make sense for me now to wait until I'm actually inspired to tackle those things. 
I'm all for going with the flow. But Mozart, Picasso or Shakespeare did not wait until they got inspired. They just sat their asses at their desks, at their easels and created. Some days it was a masterpiece, some days it wasn't, just like my fire. The idea here is that even during the ebbs of life, you can create your own life and not wait for inspiration. Because creating your own life is a daily habit, and it doesn't really matter if every day is a masterpiece. The important thing is that you flex your creative muscles every day. Some days, the fire is taking longer to catch. But once it catches, once the fire is lit in your heart, it gets going on its own and every day becomes a creation. What are you creating today? And again today, fire teaches me its share of lessons. So you have understood by now that heating my house with a fireplace is a choice. A choice that I fully assume, even on the days when I do not feel inspired, as I have discussed it. But even more, I want to tell you that I assume it, especially on the days when I do not feel inspired or motivated. What I mean by that is that in my life, in your life, the question of the vibration that we choose is crucial. I therefore choose to consider that, even on days when I am rather low, I am not the victim of a malicious universe, of governments which conspire for my destruction, of my deficient family environment, of my dishonest boss, or my rotten DNA. I am the creatrix of my life. And that vibration, that energy, it changes everything. If I want to be calmer, happier, at peace, the only thing I have to do is take care of my energy levels. So, I make do with, on the days when I am less motivated. I find the good, the beautiful, the warm in everything as much as possible, and I cultivate my vibration as high as possible, as happy and positive as possible. And I create my positive life. I do with the energy of the moment, not against. So I let go on the lower days and go with the flow. Every energy that the universe presents me has something to offer. It's up to me to take advantage of it. It's up to me to find the positive in it and stretch it out until it covers the rest of my day, like a pink cover. Every day I practice this And every night I write a list of the 10 things that I am most grateful for. And often, having spent a few minutes looking at the fire is one of those things. A small thing that brings me joy, beauty and comfort in times when there are, sometimes, less big things for which I feel gratitude. What about you? What are you grateful for today? One of the most criticized energies, one that has the worst reputation, is the astronomical and astrological phenomenon called Mercury retrograde. A lot of people just take a break during this time and curse while waiting for it to end. If you want to know how to take advantage of what is present, prepare for it in serenity and bounce back with joy. If you want to learn the three essential elements which are always the same, the seven ways you can use the period, and the real benefits that are present each time at Mercury Retrograde. If you are ready to nail your Mercury Retrograde periods and to align your energy with the flow rather than against it, you can join the Masterclass on January 26th, 9pm Paris time, just before the next retrograde, and learn everything you need to take advantage of the time and make big leaps forward. You can click on the link in the description to get an invite to the free masterclass. That's it for this episode. The next one is still in creation. Thanks for listening, and don't forget, if you want to support this podcast, share, subscribe, and leave stars, blue thumbs, and a review on whichever platform you listen to. If you want to be accompanied in the change processes that life offers you, 
If you want to participate in the awakening of feminine energy in the world, live your life as a goddess, know the secrets of witches, and apply the rituals of fairies in your daily life, do not hesitate to contact me by going to the VIP coaching page of my website, isaiabell.com, or by participating in the retreats, programs, or courses that I offer regularly. You can also subscribe to my newsletter to be informed of all the news in the real and virtual world of Isaiah Bell. You will, of course, find this podcast on all platforms, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, etc., but also on YouTube and on my site, isaiahbell.com, on the podcast page. <laughs>